The floods of 2010 have brought relief to the floodplain graziers of the great inland river systems of Australia. Relief that some properties have waited for for more than 13 years. But it wasn't always like that. Over a century of rain and flood records show that the average time between floods has less than one year. However, since water exploitation by irrigators began, this time appears to have extended beyond a decade. Even with the glorious flooding of 2010, floodplain graziers know it's time to plan ahead. Because as certain as death and taxes, in arid Australia, there's a dry time a coming. Well, when, the, uh, when we have a flood like this, obviously our carrying capacity increases substantially, so um, it's about what we do next. In the 1990s, the Australian Floodplain Association was formed. Today, it is an amalgam of graziers from the Murray-Darling and the Lake Air Basin systems, scientists and environmentalists. Leon Zanka is a floodplain grazier on the lower Paru River. This, this whole lake system, when it's full, is just a hive of activity for the, uh, for the bird life, the frog life, fish life. Um, it's part of that whole um, wetland biodiversity, that whole ecosystem. And from a floodplain grazing perspective, I find it intriguing when I think that we work together with the floods, with the natural flows that we get, and so does the bird life, so does the biodiversity. It's one of the, the few industries that I can think of that you can really say is 100% compatible with the environment. While facing all the challenges of a boom-bust ecology, Leon Zanka is continuing the fight to keep over-exploitation out of the Paru system. Pop and Peter Peterson, on the other hand, saw the infamous Cubby Station and other irrigators cripple the floodplain enterprise of Brenda Station on the Kalgoa River. It's been a monumental disaster, both environment, environmentally and economically. It's, um, it's changed people's livelihoods dramatically. They can run far less stock. They don't have the reliability of floods. They don't even have the reliability of getting water just for stock and domestic use. And environmentally, it's just been dreadful. The, the um, lignums died in thousands and thousands of acres, lots. Um, there's hundreds of huge river red gums and smaller ones that have all died, as well as Coolabar. It's just been dreadful. Similarly, in the environmentally rich Macquarie marshes, Peter McClellan has watched his country on Blue Light Station change since the construction of the Burundong Dam in the 60s. He has watched rich, diverse floodplain pastures change to roly-poly. Well, this, this is, um, used to be uh, water cooch, uh, all out through there, and it's like Gilgai water cooch country, and you'd, um, it sort of was... Uh, oh, one beast to uh, cow and calf for 10 acres, and now it's um, it's roly poly. That's something about 120 acres to the cow where it used to be uh, cow and calf for 10 acres. Peter McClellan's grandfather took up marsh country in the 1880s. And you can see across here that there's um, roly poly as high as you can get, and uh, but there's nothing underneath it. it used to be uh, reeds cooch grass and uh, some of it was just open water just there because that was pretty deep. Paul and Debbie Kaluda run Nari Station. Paul says floods are a necessity of their operation. Without water laying on this country it can't grow like it needs substantial rain for this heavy soils on the, on the river to grow so it needs it's that's how it's evolved it needs water to lay on it so if it's not laying on it um, it's just basically black soil wasteland. Over the last 30, 40, 40 years, there's been a diversion of equity upstream. Justin and Julie McClure run Kalara Station near Tilpa on the Darling River. Justin says the extraction of irrigation water with small to medium floods are the most damaging. When the proportion of extractions gets, well, out of proportion. 90% of the actual flows are now diverted. Low flows and high diversion really crucifies us. That's when it hurts. That's when we, we feel the pain, the environment feels the pain, and South Australia and Victoria don't get their equitable share of the river. It's not the irrigator's fault. The fault lies with the people who manage. The people who manage are the government. So I just 
I think that we need to be very careful about how we, where we point the finger and where the blame lies. What the irrigators did, they did, did it was all done legally and under licence. Uh, Morally it was totally wrong, but but they had permission to do it, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did it, yes. To, you've got to lay the, the blame at the foot of the government, there's no doubt about that. At the moment there's probably three or four or five channels like this coming down at the moment, all spread out like this. Yeah. If you suddenly put all that water into, a, say, a Darling in the V River, how much water would you actually have? It'd absolutely be colossal. Yeah. And then, you, again, you talk about irrigation, you're up against like the Irrigators Council, which is a very professional, um, very professional lobby group that's got the wherewithal and the means and the personnel and the finances to to be a professional lobbyist. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're a little organisation consisting of floodplain fellows that really is volunteer work and after hours work for everything you do. But the Australian Floodplain Association has grown, has learned to be professional, has a voice, and today politicians are at least listening. Politicians are very good at coming and looking at, uh, very good at coming looking at our plight, but not doing anything, did they? they you know, felt very sorry if it's while they saw it and then and then they promptly moved on and forgot about it. As the floodplains are soaking under the floods of 2010, the age-old contest will resume. Irrigators and developers pointing to all that water going to waste. But the members of the AFA know that this boom-bust nature of the inland rivers takes away all predictability. The floods must be allowed to fill the wetlands of Australia's heart. The AFA continues to fight for a fairness and equity in the allocation and extraction of water so that there is a future for inland Australia. And a century of learning how to live and work with nature is not disregarded for opportunistic greed. Living there at the end, while we still love the property, it was just so sad to see it go the way it did with the floodplain just becoming less and less healthy and, and um, so, so many trees died, so many acre, thousands of acres of lignum died too, didn't it?